You can catch me in the cherry red 150. Ooh. Got the grizzly locked in the stizzy. Yeah. Pop the clizzy going 60 down a wall. Wizzy drunk pissy. <laughs> Trying to cruise through the avenue. Of YouTube, YouTube, boxing YouTube world. The saga continues. What's happening? Welcome to Boxing After Dark. I'm your host, Not Turn Thoughts. Yo, what it is, man? What's happening? I am very, very, very uh, happy. <laughs> See the smile on my face? I'm very happy to bring to you the, the news. Uh, it's not breaking news. I don't break news. You dig what I'm saying? I let other people that got a little bit more time on their hands break news but news nevertheless always the more the finalization of josh taylor the tartan tornado versus jose ramirez the jaguar Ooh, i'm telling you right now that fight bar none there is no other fight right now that is that high octane guaranteed. Give me a second. Let me get a little sip. Not one. To be honest with you. I know the heavyweights, the glamour division, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury. That's huge. You know what I'm saying? That's magnormous. We know this. Terrence Bud Crawford versus Errol Spence, the truth. That's huge. If that fight ever happens, that's big. That's grandioso. But this fight right here, the Tartan Tornado, the Jaguar, I'm telling you, that's going to be a good, that's the dynamics of that fight. I'm, I'm just going to give, you know, right now, I'm doing the long math, the long division, the mathematics, because I do not know you know i don't want to say it's a 50 50 fight in my mind because right now it's not a 50 50 fight in my mind right now i lean slightly towards the tartan tornado and i'm gonna talk about that in just a minute but first let me backtrack because the saga continues and last night man i still just something was bothering me you know i was still looking into the situation with showbiz the adult teddy atlas Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Yildirim. And that whole situation of comparison of Sugar Ray Leonard versus Larry Bonds and Sugar Ray Leonard versus Bruce Finch and Muhammad Ali versus Chuck Webner and Muhammad Ali versus Sean Pierre Koopman. You know, that whole thing. And I said... In my mind, I went back and I said, you know, yeah, I looked at it as Teddy Atlas was saying these heavy bags and, and he just, you know, these guys that's not bringing anything to him. And um, he's just beating them up in the ring from pillar to post. And my mind dated back to when he went up to fight Kovalev, the crusher. And to me, the crusher had been, you know, had his guts busted up when he fought. And hold on, let me, let me. My mind went back to Canelo going up to fight the bigger man, Sergey Kovalev. You know what I'm saying? And I gave, and he compared that, showbiz the adult that is, he compared that to his man's Roy Jones Jr. going up to fight John Ruiz, the silent man. And you know how that story played out. But he went up there and did his thing against John Ruiz. John Ruiz came back down and, you know what I'm saying, the cookie crumbled with Anthony uh, Antonio Tarver, the magic man. Okay, but good comparison. He went up there, tested out his waters with the big boys, and fought an older, you know, Sergey Kovalev, who had just came off of a tough fight with Anthony Yard and went straight back into training to fight him. And uh, he knocked him out in the later rounds. And, you know, Showbiz the Adult made other good points. He said, you know, Muhammad Ali and Archie Moore and, you know, um, 
it, that list goes on and on in my mind. Mayweather versus Arturo Gotti and um, things of that nature. Sonny Liston was old. You know what I'm saying? Rocky Rocky Marciano. He was naming, you know, it just it's always been the case of the, you know, changing of the guards, the passing of the baton and a young up and coming fighter fighting an older fighter. You know what I'm saying? And salute that. I dig that. But back to Canelo. Um, Floyd Patterson, that's the other name that was bothering me. Muhammad Ali versus Floyd. Um, so <clears throat> Canelo fights Sergey Kovalev. And I said, I felt like Sergey Kovalev just was coming off of a tough fight and he took that fight short notice. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, he fought Sergey Kovalev to prepare himself to fight Caleb Smith. And I, for one, I didn't want to do a disservice to Caleb Smith. I said, let me really go and check out Caleb Smith because I don't want to look at him like a Teddy Atlas and say he's just a punching bag. Not saying that that's exactly what Teddy Atlas was referring to, but I said, you know, I, I watched the, the Canelo Caleb Smith fight and I didn't see anything special besides the height. I seen the intangibles, but I didn't see anything materialize. I didn't see him. I didn't see him as a threat. I didn't see him throw any punches that he had any respect level to him whatsoever. So I said, let me do my due diligence because when he went and fought in the Super Series and won the Muhammad Ali Trophy, I wasn't focused on him. I was focused on the Tartan Tornado fighting, um, you know, Regis Progray and fighting, what's that guy's name? Ivan Baranchek. You dig? So anyways, let me go back. I go back. I love to learn something new. Every day I love to learn something new. So I go back and let me check out Caleb Smith. Caleb Smith, when he fought against George Grove, because I, I, I worked my way backwards. The first fight I watched last night, I watched some bangers last night too, but I watched Canelo versus Callum Smith first. You know, Then I watched Canelo, uh, then I watched Callum Smith versus George Grove. And I said, well, actually, I take that back. I watched him versus John Ryder. And watching him, fight against John Ryder, I looked at that fight and I said, John Ryder is not even close to a Canelo right now. I said, John Ryder is doing everything that Canelo was able to do, minus the defense and minus the power. If he would have had a little bit more defense, if he was more defensive, defensive, able to slip punches a little bit better and had a little bit more pop in his punches and had a little bit more power to his punches, I could have seen John Ryder doing the same thing to Caleb Smith that Canelo had just did you know what I'm saying but that fight went in the favor of Caleb Smith it looked controversial it looked like it was you know what I'm saying demanding a rematch but water under the bridge right so I said let me go back a little bit more and I watched him fight Hazan Indam that's how you say his name Hazan Indam I'm gonna put it like that and I watched Caleb Smith drop this guy with a check hook multiple times it was a beautiful check hook and it made me laugh because i see him throw the same check hook at Can canelo alvarez and canelo alvarez just ducked it <laughs> and smiled and laughed at it and you know what i'm saying so he knocked down multiple times endom hazan endom and i said okay cool but H hazan endom had been knocked out 12 times between his last three opponents so i said let me go back a little bit further when I watched the fight against George Grove. And I said, okay, I see it now. I see this pop. I see him fighting at a distance that's perfect for his height. I see him working on the inside. I see him um, having good punching placement and some power on his punch. But at the same time, it looked like to me, um, two things stood out when he fought Canelo. For one, he had only four weeks notice to prepare for the fight. You know, he took the fight four weeks notice. That was a, a red flag, similar to Sergey Kovalev, red flag coming off a quick fight against Anthony Yard. But, you know, Callum Smith had called out Canelo before. He said that was a dream fight. He said he doubt he would ever get that fight. Cool. He got the fight, but he got it with four weeks notice. And also he said, you know, he felt like he was maybe growing out of the division. 
He just didn't feel as strong and as fast. He made weight. He didn't make any excuses after his loss. You know what I'm saying? He fought Canelo. I think he gave everything he could to Canelo, but it seemed like from round one to round 12, he really didn't have any respect on any of his punches. There was not one moment that I could highlight with Canelo head snapping back and sweat flying off that you can even take a screenshot of. It just, I never see, I never, Canelo didn't get a scratch on him. You know what I'm saying? It's Caleb Smith did not look the same that he looked against George Grove. He definitely didn't look the same that he looked against Hazan Nadam. And he, and he looked more similar to what he looked like, you know, when he fought against um, John Ryder. And in looking at John Ryder fight, I'm like, this dude is food for Canelo. So I just really wasn't so stoked about the whole Canelo versus Caleb Smith. But I gave him his credit because he's a Super Series winner. He held down the title for two years. He was, you know what I'm saying, at that time, the top super metalweight. You dig? So I had to do that. I had to go back and look at that and do my due diligence. You know, they both... Canelo Alvarez and um, Caleb Smith both uh, knocked out the same guy. Uh, what was his name? If his if his name can come to me, real quick, uh, Rocky Field, Fielding. They both knocked out Rocky Fielding. Um, but I still want to go back and look at some more Caleb Smith. You know, he's a, coming from a fighting family. His both of his bro, both of his brothers fought, and I mean, he's a decent fighter. I just think you know he just was no match for Canelo. So. Anyways, just had to go back and touch on that. Wanted to give Caleb Smith his, his proper respect. Didn't want to look at him as just a punching bag and a pushover. You know, he did pose a threat. But watching that fight, you know what I'm saying, I don't believe he delivered. He, he wasn't, that was, that was not his best night. He got beat. Canelo beat, I thought he was going to fold him in half. You know what I'm saying, by the ninth round, his corner was saying, let's stop the fight. He showed nothing but heart, nothing but grit. He's like, no, I'm going to finish this fight. And he got his bicep busted off of his arm. His face was swollen up. His stomach was busted up. And he still stood there and fought like a man to the end. So he didn't come to lay down. You know what I'm saying? But he was a punching bag. So Teddy Atlas saying Can Canelo's fighting punching bags in comparison to Yildirim, maybe in comparison to Kovalev, and maybe in comparison to Caleb Smith. I don't know Teddy Atlas's mind. I didn't read a whole bunch into that. Boom. Now, like I said, he looked good fighting against George Grove. Speaking of George Grove, I'm going to segue from um, George Grove to Josh Taylor. Because at the time, George Grove fought against Caleb Smith. He had the same trainer as Josh Taylor, which was Shane McGagan. I'm saying his name wrong. What was his name? Shane McGuigan close enough and um josh taylor the tartan tornado like i said been a fan of josh taylor and been following him since he was in the super series when he fought against ivan baranchek and when he won the muhammad ali trophy against regis pro grace the rougarou you know what i'm saying and when i heard he was going to be possibly fighting um jose ramirez I already knew that was going to be a barn burner, but I did need to study up on Jose Ramirez to see what he, you know, his, what his career path was to start to try to see if I could find ways to put together my assessment. You know, now, first of all, I'm starting off with Victor Postal. You know what I'm saying? I'm halfway through. I watched last night. I watched all of Victor Postal versus Josh Taylor, and I got halfway through. Victor Postal versus Jose Ramirez, and I got sidetracked to go into looking into Caleb Smith. So my homework tonight, for me personally, I'm gonna I'm gonna start right where I left off at and finish watching uh, Jose Ramirez versus Victor Postal. But it's it's strange to me, man. Um, they like Yin and Yang. You got an orthodox fighter. They both like the same height. They measure they measurement very close. You know what I'm saying? Josh Taylor usually is a bigger guy. You know, just like Victor Postal was usually a bigger guy. But Josh Taylor, um, you know, Josh Taylor has, he's a southpaw, first of all. I don't know if I already mentioned that. He's a southpaw. He's a switch hitter. Not as good as Terrence Bub Crawford, but he is a nice 
ambidextrous switch hitter. And um, I, he, he likes to mix it up in the inside. He likes to fight. His best is at mid-range. And then, you know, to get him inside the pocket, he still does some clean work when he's inside the pocket. To me, he stays in the pocket a little too long sometimes. I think mid-range would be perfect, and I think he needs to develop his long range. Watching him against Victor Postal, Victor Postal was able to, you know what I'm saying, do some things and have his way with, uh, he, he even hurt um, Josh Taylor a few times. He hurt him with the body shot, you know what I'm saying? And he exposed a little bit of weakness in Josh Taylor's game with long range. Now, at the time, Josh Taylor was still a little bit greener. He was only 12 fights in, and that was his first time going past 10 or 11 rounds. And in the 11th round or the 10th round, he actually was when he started hurting Victor Postal and knocking him down. But there were some things that I see him not be able to do with Victor Postal that I seen Jose Ramirez being able to do with Victor Postal. Now, Victor, Jose Ramirez, to me, is a pressure fighter come forward fighter and he definitely likes to get inside the telephone booth and do work you know what i'm saying he just he's a close range fighter but he was able to do some things to victor postal from distance and close the gap with some speed and connect some double jabs and i didn't even see josh taylor doing that so i'm still breaking this fight down i'm gonna I'm a really break this fight down to, i'm really gonna break this fight down as much as possible um so my homework is Jose Ramirez finished watching the fight between him and Victor Postal. And then I'm going to watch um, Jose Ramirez versus Maurice Hooker. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to go and go back into the Rougarou fight. It was one of my favorite fights. I'm going to go back to the Josh Taylor Rougarou fight. And then I'm going to go back into watch Josh Taylor even before that. So I'll, I'll go back and watch at least five fights out. You know what I'm saying? So I got three more fights to watch with Josh Taylor. And I got a Four and a half fights to watch with um, Ramirez, and it's that's that's for undisputed, undisputed. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, of course, that's going to be on top rank ESPN, and that's also going to put Teofimo Lopez in that position to where, you know, once he gets done with this trilla, he's still going to be, you know, coming to 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 the uh, ESPN top rank, you know, Bob Arum situation. If he really, really wants to fight the winner between Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor, whomever that might be. I don't know who that's going to be right now. I lean towards Josh Taylor because Josh Taylor, to me, is a little bit more of a three-dimensional fighter. Like I said, um, the fact that he can switch hit, not as good as Terrence Bud Crawford, but the fact that he, you know what I'm saying, can switch and the fact that he can fight in the inside and at mid-range comfortably I feel like he has a slight advantage but I don't know can he take that same pressure from Jose Ramirez because like when he fought Regis Progray Regis Progray to me is not really a pressure come forward fighter he's not a front foot dominant fighter let me know how y'all feel in the comments below before I stretch this video out way too long and I got more to come so anyways man all respect all salute to everybody out there man it's y'all hump day it's y'all hump day so get over the hump you know what I'm saying? Do the Humpty dance, whatever you got to do. But look at the bright side of this life. Just be positive, positive, positive energy going out to you. This is Nocturnal Thoughts, man. I appreciate y'all time. And time is the most precious thing that we have. It's the only commodity that once it's gone, you don't get it back. So respect it. Nocturnal Thoughts, man.